little early. It's a little early in the morning. It's a little early. It's a little early. What is up, everybody? Hopefully, uh, once again, let me know if uh, the audio and everything is synced up. It's a pretty chill morning today. Pretty chill morning today. Did my little dog walk. Uh, gonna look over some stuff. I just uh, uh, got some videos done. What's up, James? How you doing? Uh, we're doing an early stream today because I feel like I want to get a hold of some of you UK bros or anybody that's across the pond. And I know you guys are gonna um, you guys miss out on the the two and four p.m. videos or live stream. So we're doing a little bit early today. But we're just going to uh, have a good time watching some Crash stuff. T-Mash just subscribed. That's cool. Um, well, let's see. The 5 to a wheel is a big question. What GoPro should I get for Motovlog? So whatever you can afford, really, because at the end of the day, all you need is 1080p, 60 frames per second. You 70, actually, 720p, 60 frames per second is pretty much all you need. And pretty much all GoPros now do that. So, I mean, you can get anyone you want if you want to go crazy and you want to do 4k or you want to do at least 2.7k 60 then i would say go get the big one the big dog uh yeah euro friendly stream that's the thing lady tau how you doing alessa how you doing the naomi 84 how you doing um the main thing is uh, i think the new gopro though has a better mic adapter so if you're looking to put your your uh, a mic to the gopro that's the way to do it if you plan on using like a task cam like these things like this is an external audio recorder type thing, then it doesn't really matter. I mean, shoot, the uh, mic adapter for the GoPros are like super duper expensive. And these things are only like, uh, I mean, they're like a couple, they're like 20, 30 bucks more, but you get more use out of it. This is how I do my audio for my videos too, like the ones that I'm doing here and for when I'm writing. So, I mean, I get multi-use out of it. Love the pink beard. Uh, I think once you hit uh, a year, though, Naomi, because you are at what? You're, uh, you're two months right now. So once you hit six months, I believe you get a gray beard. No, six months you get a brown beard, I believe. And then one year you get a gray beard. So, yeah, I know a lot of you guys. What's up, Matt? How you doing? I started my channel and have saving for it now, but the Hero 8 is so expensive and I still need to buy a mic and helmet strip. Yeah, so all that stuff. Well, before you jump into... To buying all that stuff uh, make sure you have your gear I mean hopefully you have your gear first on a rebel 500 with ABS with your views do the Honda rebel 500 is awesome I'm glad you have a good bike man I'm glad you have a good bike so we're gonna have more people come in real quick we're gonna switch on over to uh, to this screen this is where we picked up from yesterday um, we're, we'll do an hour-long stream and all that stuff we'll pick up uh, right here uh, the prism tube, uh, that one thing I, that I kind of like about it is that I believe it picks up calm inf or a uh, calm, uh, audio, but it sounds very like, like it's a radio. So the way I do it with Nikki, I have, uh, the two task cams and I, ha I do a lot of post processing. I, I would do all the editing with audio afterwards. Um, if you want to like a run and gun point and shoot type thing, then the prism is probably going to be the best bet if you do a vlog and stuff like that. Uh, Doty, it is 10 o'clock in the morning here in Arizona. Um, but I prefer to have, you know, I have like two cam, I have a, a camera on her face, camera on my face. I have a 360 camera on her bike, my bike, two audio recorders. I mean, it's just, I have crazy stuff going on and I, I like the aspect of, of editing. Um, so like today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to work a little bit more on the after the ride channel. So I have, uh, all the videos up for Dan and the Fireman. Uh, I will have a video up today for a crash um, uh, at 2 p.m. And then I I got a video for for tomorrow. It's the CBT or not CBT module one U-turn and slow ride. And then I got Monday's video pretty much done. So I'm gonna work a little bit on the after the ride channel. And if you guys don't know what after the ride is, let's go ahead and do this real quick. Let's let's get another tab after the ride i have to do motorcycle i have to do after the ride motorcycle because uh it's not super popular yet it's only 484 subscribers so if you guys would like to support uh this channel uh please do so here's the link to the channel so please uh subscribe over there um but i have some videos coming up 
So I had, you know, the uh, some mental health stuff lately. I got some playlists here. So I got the battle after. It's a vigil journal, but I'm going to be doing a, the, a crash after. I'm working on uh, an interview questions and stuff like that. So I plan on uh, doing more of this. Okay, so I plan on doing more of this. So please swing on by after the ride. Subscribe to after the ride. And uh, I will be doing more like an opinion piece, kind of like how I'm talking right now. So you guys have questions. I think it would be like a really good opportunity to answer some of the questions on that channel. So like uh, the right there. So with, with the 5.2 the wheeler asking about GoPro, um, I could ease, I'll, I'll do a podcast on what I believe is, is stuff that you should have for moto vlogs. I mean, I'll have like a podcast style thing going on over there. That's basically what that channel is all about. It's a podcast. This is um, the closest I'll get to a podcast on this channel. So the live stream is. So this channel is mainly uh, how to ride a motorcycle safely. And the other channel is, is answering questions, which will be in the aspect of how to build confidence. So this, this channel is the hazard perception, the skills needed, accident scene management, so it's pretty much everything that is me, and then the other channel is just like my opinion. So I try to stick with facts on this channel. The other channel is opinion. Yes, uh, Vulcan Dude, I will. So I'm working with Spotify right now. So let me go ahead and go to Spotify real quick. I'll show you guys. I'll show you what I see. So this is Spotify. So if you guys remember, I had uh, the DDFM show for a while. Uh, I started it in March 23. Uh, so we'll do all the time. So you guys can see the stats that I see. So March 23rd, and I went all the way up to uh, the DDF show 13. Um, the way it was set up wasn't sustainable, so it kind of died. But I found a way to sustain it, so I'll be I'll probably be picking this one back up. It'll probably my opinion show on after I will probably pick up on episode 14. I'll just start over again. But when we go to the catalog right now, it's processing. So the battle after is processing right now. So the first episode is is processing. Um, on there and then once that happens it will be uh, consistently updated so yes it's on Spotify so if you have Spotify um, the audio version of those will be there um, I'll have the DDFM show I'll have the battle after I'll have the crash after or the after the crash all those different things they will be their own podcast on Spotify also so if you don't have like YouTube Premium, one of the cool things about YouTube Premium is that I can turn my phone off and it'll still play, just like an audio thing. So that's another thing you could do if you don't have Spotify. Thank you guys for subbing. So we're going to jump into this one. We're taking right off. Um, this is going to be an early stream, so there's not going to be as many people. This is typically why I do it at, at 2 p.m. or 4 p.m. My time is that there's there's just more people off work in the United States and all that stuff. So my main audience is the United States. So you're going to have all that stuff there, but I wanted to bring this up to you guys and have fun with you guys and kind of had more of a chill, not necessarily, um, all work. You know what I mean? So we're going to go ahead and we'll jump into it and do some Q and a stuff since it's slower paced and everything and have some fun and Germany. Look at that. Boom, boom. 6 PM here. Almost done with work. Nice. Where are you at? Oh, ouchie. So once again, this will be a one hour stream because I do have to get back to work. <laughs> um, so right here. Okay. Uh, this, you know, we'll do something different since this is, um, is, is just with you guys. I'll do something different. So typically I'm like talking at you guys, um, kind of like a coach and student type thing dynamic but this is uh, let's let's go ahead and do like almost like a behind the scenes like what i look for so like because i'm not super high energy right now i'm still drinking my caffeine and all that so uh what do i do here what am i looking for what is it that like when i make my videos you know like how how do i come up with the content how do i do all that stuff so we'll do something like that um you know in fact let's go ahead let's go ahead and change the title of this how I come up with, all right, how I create my videos. Okay, 
So we just changed the title of the of this one. So yeah, so right here. Ah! I clicked the wrong button. Let's go back. I'll get the nebulizer and coffee. Oh man, you're gonna make everybody anxious. <laughs> uh albuterol and all that. Anxiety inducing. Alright. So how I look at this. So when I first look at I, I first look at the crash. So like if somebody sends me a video, this is what I'm going to look at. I'm going to skim through it. I'm going to skim through the video and be like, where's the crash? Where's the crash? Okay. So there's, there's obviously ground. So, okay. So what happened here? So I'm going to go and scroll back and I'm going to see, okay, what kind of crash is it? Okay. So let's see. Oh, okay. So it's a turn. It's a curve. So he's going to go off on the curve. Okay. So that's what happened there. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so I see a little bit of brake pressure being applied. You'll see him kind of stand it up. So this right here, that little jerky movement, handlebars. Okay, so now I'm thinking it's a little bit of it's it's a brake. There is part braking is part of the problem on this one, but also he's going a little wide. So why did he go wide and why did he feel the need? I always reconstruct going backwards. Uh, this would be uh, a high side. Um, this is a high side caused by. The tire's grabbing the curb, basically. So this is considered a high side because he's going over it like that. It was going to turn into a low side, uh, but it changed into a high side. So I reconstruct backwards. So I'll see the crash, and I'll be like, okay, so why was he grabbing the brakes so hard? Okay, well, he went a little bit wide. Well, why did he go wide? So technically, you know, everyone would be like, well, he applied the brakes too hard. He wasn't counter steering too much, or he wasn't counter steering enough. Well, it's like, well, why? How is he in this situation in the first place? So let's go back a little bit further. Okay, so it's a blind turn. So I can see why he might have had a little bit too much speed. Because it's hard to judge. Okay, it's hard to judge the speed on, on something or judge the turn. So maybe he went a little bit too hot. That's fine. But, like, was there any indication? Was there any, like, warning signs before this? It, he didn't just come up to this. And then I'm like, okay, he's got a straightaway. So he's got plenty of time to to anticipate some type of road issue because of the blind turn. Let's go further. How much video do we have? What's the context? How was he riding prior? And I'd be like, okay, well, there's a sign here. So this sign is a great clue that he should be slowing his ass down, right? That's a warning sign over there in the UK, I believe, right? Like with the the white and the, and the red. Because I've seen some U-turn signs like that. All right, so that's all the video we have. So this is the the previous video. The guy, um, the guy uh, was going like 300 kilometers an hour. So this one right here, let's figure it out. Okay, so now I figured out he high sided. He went too wide in the turn. There was some brake pressure, but why did he go too wide? Was he going too fast? I'll play it in full motion so I can see why. Um, but there is definitely some indications that this is going to be a sharp left turn. And then also it's a blind turn. So we have hazard clues here. We have a, a clue here with the uh, the sign. So that's clue number one. This is going to be a sharp turn. So how do we navigate a sharp turn? Well, we slow down. Okay, blind turn. So now what's the, the biggest hazards with blind turns? What I'm thinking to myself is, well, you can't see, obviously. And then that means you can't judge your speed. You can't judge the curve. You can't judge nothing. So the best thing you can do is slow down. Um, but also to increase your line of sight, move over to the outside of the turn so you can see around as best as possible. But what's the problem with being on the outside in this situation? Because is there a hazard prior to this turn that being on the outside would cause a problem? Let me look. Right here. This would be a problem on the outside, um, being on the outside because you can't see that your line of sight is terrible for this intersection. So this is a really multi-system trap almost because you have an intersection and a curve almost right next to each other and they're on opposing forces. Like on this situation, I want to be all the, all the way over to the left side uh, towards the line because I want to be able to see if there's anybody coming out. But then I also have to switch over to the right side to maintain this turn. So I'm in a pretty crappy spot. So how do I increase my reaction time and how do I uh, decrease these hazard traps? Uh, for me personally, I would stay in lane position two, right where he's at, and I'd maintain lane position two all the way because let's keep it simple, right? Let's keep everything simple. Let's go ahead and move. I mean, you could definitely do 313 easily. Uh, you definitely can, but then when you go, uh, so what he's saying is three is being off on the side, going over here to one, and then going back to three, I believe. Is that what you're saying for the, the turn? What's up, Alexandra? How you doing? It's been a while. It definitely has. 
um, if you're constantly shifting uh, lane positions right before a turn, you're not going to set yourself up for the turn. So that's a big problem. Um, and we can kind of see that. Let's uh, where are we at? We're at 724. We could see that happening on this video. Let's go ahead and scroll over here. Right here. So we could see that happening on this video. So our biggest concern on here, because he's going to do shifting. He's going to shift positions basically right before the turn with a high rate of speed. So he, now let's say this was all one lane. Let's just say this is one lane. It's not double lane. There's no incoming traffic. So he went from lane position three, which was going to be like way over here. And then he went to lane position one. So let's say the, the intersection was over here. So he switched back and forth. Now he's getting back into his lane position, maintaining his high rate of speed to get back into the lane position three so he can set himself up for the turn. But he didn't set up enough. He didn't slow down enough. He didn't get himself in a good body position because he was rushing it. And then this is what happens. So that, to me, is going to be a lot of the same problem when it comes to this this video. Is Let's say he switches from, from over here or from lane position 3 to over here to this side. And then goes back to lane position three. He put himself in kind of like that same situation. So it's like, what are we doing here? What can we figure out? What what am I going to learn from this? What's the best situation that's going to make it simple so that we, do, we just don't crash? So my thing is, if we can keep it as simple as possible and just stay in lane position two, which is right in the middle for the hazards because that's going to give us the best space cushion it's going to it's going to be the jack of all trades for line of sight you know we can't see the best to the right we can't see the best to the left but we can see better than, than if we're having to move back and forth and then i can also prepare for this intersection so i'm going to be slowing down giving a good look and since i'm slowing down giving that a good look i already did the slow portion of the slow look press and roll so now that i'm already slowed i'm in lane position two i'm already slowed so I'm already slowed. Now that I see that this is open, my focus is now 100% to the turn. So I know that there's nobody here. So my 100% focus now is to this turn because I just passed this hazard. Now I got a new hazard coming up. And thankfully, I've already slowed down enough for this first hazard that I'm set up appropriately for this hazard. Now all I have to do is look through the turn and then start to get ready to initiate counter steering, but then I'm getting my body positioning correct. And I have this understanding it's a blind turn, so I'm gonna stay in lane position two, and I'm just gonna take it nice and easy, because if you have a car that might be coming around and they go over the line a little bit, lane position two will give me a good space cushion if I had to move over to the outside, if I absolutely had to. But it's also gonna give me a good space cushion from the outside, because I don't know how sharp of a turn. So lane position two is gonna, for me, is going to be the best position here and then that and then obviously slowing down before the for this uh blind intersection to the right so i'm slowed down i'm in already in good position and i know what i have to do is look uh slow look press and roll so if i feel like i'm going too slow around this turn i can always just roll on the throttle I don't have to apply the brakes. So that's going to remove this problem that he has right here by applying the brakes too hard because he's going too fast. Because I already removed the speed. And there's no need now for brakes. So that is what I do. So I spend quite a bit of time on a video figuring it out. And then I'll rewatch it and rewatch it. And then I go back. Okay. Then I go back. And I. I try to find a way to teach that. What was the biggest thing here? What's the biggest problem? Because this is a very common accident. This is way too common. Going into a turn too fast and then a cascade of a bad events causes problems. That's typically what happens here. So how can I make it simple and reduce these chain of events? Because there's usually one or two things at the beginning that causes that chain of events. So how do I stop those one or two things? Okay. How do I stop that? The real the rare child is free date night with the wife. We'll catch it. Dude, you have an amazing time, man. Have a great time with your wife. Have a great time with your wife. Glad, glad that you're here, even for a little bit. So that's what I'll do. So when I'll go back and I'm getting ready to film this, you know what you guys want me to do like a, a like a rough draft? I'll I'll straight up ignore you guys and I'll just I'll start the video. I'll do the video. 
I'll do it like I'm I'm uh like I'm actually filming it. So let me go ahead and scroll this down a little bit. You guys want me to do that? Let me know. I gotta get a little bit prepared. I gotta get I'll, I'll pretend literally that I have the camera, I got the mics, I gotta I gotta sync it all up, I'll get it ready, I'll rewind it, and then I'll talk through it like you guys aren't even here. Let me know if that's what you guys wanna do. Cause like that's the whole process and I'm like in the mood for the process right now. <laughs> I know, I know. Just for this, how about just for this video? And then, then we have plenty. We have plenty of videos. We got plenty of videos. All right, all right. I'll just do it. It'll be quick. It'll be quick. It'll be like five minutes. Oh, you're here? Yeah, I know you're here. All right. So here we go. Let's see if I could do it. <laughs> no, I put myself. I put myself on. All right. So let's see. What is up, everybody? Dan, Dan, the fireman here. We're gonna be going over this motorcycle crash. Actually, see, here's the thing: is I always turn off the audio. Let me go ahead and turn off the audio. Let me get it ready. All right. Let me turn off the audio. Let me mute it. Let me mute it for you guys. There we go. There we go. That's the problem. All right. Are we live? All right. What is up, everybody? Dan and the Fireman here. We're going to be going over this motorcycle crash. This is going to be an issue with going too fast into the turn. It's going to be a high side accident. We're going to talk about how we can prevent that for ourselves, though. So that's kind of like a rough. That's like a one take. So now I get to the beginning. Sometimes if I don't like it, I'll just do it again. Like if it didn't flow well. All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. I can cut all this stuff out. This is the intros playing right now. All right. All right, guys. With this screenshot right here, this is what I want to point out right away is that how are we setting up for this turn? See, now I'm going to go ahead and I'll reset that. All right, so right now we have a screenshot. So what we have is definitely some clues that this is gonna be a very hazardous situation. We have a sharp left turn right here. The sign right here is gonna indicate that it's gonna be a sharp left turn coming up, but then we also see that this massive hedge is blocking any view to the left. But if we notice, with us go and scroll up a little bit more, we have another hazard right here. We have uh, this intersection. Now, I, I consider driveways intersections because you have vehicles going in and out. So how do we prevent or how to, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut, resume. So how do we, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go back, cut and zoom. Okay, let me think, let me think. So how do we, so how do we prepare for these two types of hazards? You know, this is gonna be something where it's very common for motorcyclists to crash in front of vehicles at intersections and for curves. So this is like a really bad double, double whammy on this situation so what would i do like what would i do personally so for me i would maintain lane position too it's gonna be the simplest thing we talk about line of sight you know for intersection so the most common thing let's just say there's no curve we have the intersection here we're gonna stay in lane position one which is gonna be right here and i'll editor's note i'll i'll be putting um like a one two or three in arrows whenever i say here or there okay so I would typically be in lane position one over here, and that way I have the best line of sight for the intersection that is coming up. So that I wanna be able to see if there's any cars over here. So the best way I could do that is being in lane position one, but that doesn't set me up for a very good successful turn right here on this turn. So what I need to do is set myself up properly for both of them while maintaining a, as high a safety margin as I possibly can. So. When I get to this position, I see this sign right here. What I'm going to be doing is, okay, there's a curve up ahead, but what other hazards are there in between me and that curve? Okay, so I know that the curve's there. I know I got to do slow look, press, and roll. I know I got to do my body positioning. I know I have to do counter steering. I'm set up for that, but I see something here. I know that there's houses here, so what do I do? I'm going to put myself in lane position too, and then I'm also going to slow it down before even the curve, before setting up for the curve to do my slow look, press, and roll. I'm going to slow down for this hazard. Because I want to creep by. It's a lot like being in a uh, a haunted house. You're not running around corners. You're literally creeping up, looking around the corners. Is everything safe? I don't want to get something to jump out at me and grab me. So you're taking your time. You're not rushing through it. So think of that like when you're riding, especially when you have hazards popping up just like this. I'm going to slow it down. You don't have to go to snail pace. You just kind of have to slow it down and get ready just in case there's somebody pulling out. They're not, slop or not stopping. They're, they're going to keep going. So are you swerving? Are you braking? All these different things. But I'm going to tell you right now, slowing down before 
the hazard is going to buy you some options. It's going to make it to where you have that time to make a decision. So slow down before the before the turn or before the intersection. So now we are slowing down before the turn and intersection. So we did the slow portion of the slow look, press, and roll. So now we're going to look right here. We're going to maintain lane position two. He didn't do that in this situation. Or he did it kind of. He was one and a half, two. Lane position two. Okay, now that we got to this portion, we see what's happening. We we know that there's no vehicles here. Now we got to set up immediately for the next turn. But we've already slowed down, so we're doing pretty good. We're slowing down, and that is going to set you up for the, the look portion. So right here, we're slowing down, slowing down, and we have to apply some type of counter steering, but we're also having to look. We can't see very far because it is a blind turn. So what we're doing is we're going back and forth, back and forth. So I'm looking over here at the very exit, and then I'm also looking right in front of me, looking at the exit, looking in front of me, looking at the exit, looking in front of me. I'm constantly ratcheting, you know, like a ratchet strap. I'm constantly ratcheting to the front, ratcheting to the back, ratcheting to the front, ratcheting to the back. And that's going to play. I'm going to go ahead and do it in slow motion right here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to look forward, look back, look forward, look back, constantly doing this. So I'm constantly looking at this edge, looking at here, looking at this edge, looking at here. And it's constantly moving while I'm making this turn. But since I can't see very far, I'm not going to accelerate. I'm not going to, I don't see my exit, so I'm not going to accelerate. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm going to maintain my lane position too, do nice and slow. And then I'm going to go ahead and use proper counter steering and body positioning to make myself through this turn. But if you never did slow down, if you get to this position and you never slow down, the one thing that's going to happen is that you're going to shoot out wide because you don't know how sharp the turn is. You might have taken an early apex like this guy. So that means he's going to shoot you out. And at this point, I'd have like a diagram up there showing what an early and delayed apex is. So it's going to shoot you out. And then since he got shot out, there's no real escape path. There's no shoulder. There's nothing that's going to happen. So right here, you can tell there's a little bit of a panic and he's going to apply the brakes. Now, this is where a lot of people think well, I could just apply the brakes during the turn. There's a way to do it. You have to stand it straight and apply the brakes. Um, or there's a, uh, an advanced technique called trail braking. You can take that in an advanced class. I don't recommend trying it uh, as a beginner, especially if you haven't even mastered slow look, press, and roll yet. So he's going to apply the brakes. His rear end's going to fishtail out, and he's going to catch that curb, which is going to cause him to do a high side. So since he did a high side, this is the type of uh, mechanism of injury that he's going to have. Okay, So you're going to have a lot of impacts. You're going to have the wrist. You're going to have the shoulder. You're going to have the elbow. You're going to have your head, which is going to bang on the ground after hips, ribs, everything. And it really depends on what you land on. So he's landing on some uh, uh, some crops, uh, maybe lettuce. It actually doesn't look like lettuce. I should know that I'm from Yuma, lettuce capital of the United States. But uh, it's definitely some type of vegetation from a farmland. And he landed on that. Imagine hitting a guardrail. Imagine hitting another car. Imagine hitting all these different things. You're going to have some problems with that. Um, and especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere, good luck uh, getting help and all that stuff. So this is why it's super important to not only just wear your gear, but it's also what we looked at on this video is that you need to set yourself up for success. So if you're not slowing down, you're not looking, you're not engaging uh, your focus on different hazards, then you're just going to go ahead and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You're just going to have fun. You're not going to you're not going to focus on safety. And before you know it, you're going too wide in the turn. And if I on that one editor's note, I'd probably redo that last exit. So while I'm while I'm doing the uh, that talk of like the summary, I usually have it playing this plane on loop. So when I'm talking about going too wide, this is showing right here. And then I'm trying to emphasize the part of looking where you want to go, hazard perception, and then going off road. So make sure you have your gear, make sure you have bike uh, gear for your bike, all these different things. Don't panic break. That's pretty much how it goes. And you can kind of tell my voice it changed. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> you could definitely uh, tell my voice has changed. Dirty D's. We had a little conversation on Instagram. I think you understand, um, but there's like a, there's almost like I have to go into Dan Dan the Fireman mode, and then now, right now, honestly, guys, I just want to hang out with you guys, so we're just going to go over some of these crashes, but that's how I do that. That's how I make the videos, um, and then I also have to find good videos that I can use. You know, sometimes there's videos that, yeah, it's way more formal than the live streams. Um, it's definitely a like a coach talking to a student and that's it there's no back and forth that's why i really like live streams i love the li i love the back and forth the the live streams are a lot like we're in class and then like after something happened like after the video or after the exercise somebody has a question or somebody has a question prior to it 
So those are all. That's what I like about the live streams. It's 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 almost like a student coach relationship with questions. When it's just me doing the videos, it's just like here, here you go, guys, learn. You know. So I I really do like this aspect. But yeah, that's that's the uh, that's I have to put on a voice, a dirty DZ. I gotta put on a voice. I I put on the Dan Dan the Fireman persona, and then. But I still have all the knowledge. It's just that I got high energy. You know what I mean? If, if I'm super slow speaking, I'd be MC Ryder. <laughs> like, I have to watch his stuff in, like, two times speed. Um, and I don't want you guys to have that. You know, I when I when I talk to people, that's this is pretty much how I am. The Dan Dan the Fireman mode. And then I get, I get quiet. All right. So let me go ahead and put the audio back on for you guys. All right, so here we go. We're going to get some audio. We're going to go over the next one. And sorry, like, I see some questions, so I'll, I'll, I'll answer some questions. Mitch, good morning, man. Wet Banana Moto. Hi, Dano. The word of the day is fundamentals. Okay, I, sometimes I have to make sure it's not like a Homer or a Bart Simpson calling. Uh, you know, I'm getting tr trolled here. Um, let's see. Sandy, hey, Michael, dude. Nice to see you again. Uh, Kawasaki Vulcan S versus the Rebel 500. I think the Kawasaki, Kawasaki Vulcan S is a great beginner bike for somebody that's too tall for the Rebel 500. Uh, in terms of what you can use it for, I think the Kawasaki Vulcan S, you can use it for a lot more than you can for the Rebel 500, but a lot of short people can't do that. And then a lot of people like the Rebel 500 ergonomics and feel. So, I mean, there's a, there's a different thing, but uh, Kawasaki Vulcan S is a great bike. You can't go wrong. Easy. He's even this way, even during a, an interview. <laughs> yeah, the homeboy hat and the instructor. I should just get a hat. I should get two hats that do that. Have you ever seen uh, people riding in Vietnam or Southeast Asia countries? Yeah, so Dodie, I have a video on that. It says, do not ride like this. Uh, you should definitely check it out. Asmodeus, how you doing, man? Oh, line of sight. So I think we've seen this one before. But it's definitely um, a problem. So this is like a good thumbnail right here. This is like a really good thumbnail. Like, uh, what happens next? You know, kind of stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, Dave. Yeah, uh, that was me in the desert. That was definitely me in the desert. I, You guys know me. I wouldn't call anybody an idiot. <laughs> I would never call somebody an idiot, especially, especially, um, five dirty bikers. Oh yeah, dude. I, I, I did a podcast with them. I love them. Great, great stuff. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So right here, when I see this, this is, this is like, whenever you do the MSF, the BRC one, and I, and a lot of you guys here are in the MSF BRC that, that, or I have taken it and you understand this part. Um, there's like certain slides that they have so they'll have slides that last like four seconds or they'll have slides that are up there But then they ask you to look This is kind of where I got the idea to do what I do. So I'm really thankful to my patrons um, For for pretty much supporting me to go to class. It was a it was a thousand dollar class for nine days uh, over a thousand actually um, For nine days and it taught me quite a bit it really did teach me quite a bit in terms of coaching. So I want to just say thank you to everybody that became a patron and supported me. I did that back in January. So I have access to all the information. I have access to all the PowerPoints. I have access to all the, the behind the scenes stuff that, that goes with MSF rider coaches. And there's quite a bit. And it let it opened my eyes to what some of these YouTubers are saying on the internet. I always thought like, Oh, they're coming up with their own stuff. That's really cool. I have to do that too. But it just turns out that if you become an MSF rider coach, you get like the holy grail of information, which is which is crazy. So um, it definitely did help me out. And then it really at that point, you, what is whatever you do with that information is more important. So I'm coming up with my own stuff. That's why I become a, an accident scene management instructor. Also, after understanding that the MSF gave you a lot. So accent scene gave me a lot on top of my ems stuff so um i don't know where i'm going with this i just like to chat with you guys but line of sight this is like one of those things with the in the powerpoint they give you the information they tell you pick out like what's the hazard here what's the road what's the road look like what's 
what's uh so it's like uh, road surfaces road ha roadway user hazards um signs road signs and then shoot there's another one escape routes what escape routes do you have and they want you to do your search evaluate execute during this so this is kind of where i got the live stream stuff going this is why the channel has gone this way because it's very visual and it's very interactive so whenever i start a video i always say hey guys look at this what is it that you see what is it that you see and you see brake lights okay so roadway user hazards so you see brake lights you see a car oncoming traffic no center line stripe so roadway uh no center line stripe uh escape paths what escape paths do we have here nothing we can only go straight or swerve way off to the right which can be a hazard because you can't see okay and then what else um escape paths roadway users road hazards any signs any signs that indicate anything nothing okay so this is all we have to go off of so now the great thing about video is that it's not just one picture it's 30 to 60 or whatever pictures in one second so when we go to this now what do you see so now what is your escape path so we have those four things remember we have and and this is why i don't talk or say this much because this is msf stuff and i don't want to step on any anybody's toes but what's the road look like okay road's still fine okay good no no center line strap okay what's the roadway users well we got a, a scooter here we have a, a bus here and we have a car here possibly wanting to come out and then we have vehicles up ahead with brake lights okay um where's our escape path we don't really have one maybe we have one to the left but remember we could also break so i mean we have braking ability but this is why like when you look at this you should always have an escape path at every single moment while you're riding and this is a good example of why because earlier we we barely had an escape path but we had a hazard so when we're going around a hazard are, do we have an escape path right there or are we just gambling are we just trying to figure out can we just as long as we get past this right here we'd be fine and a lot of times that's not correct i mean right now it's like he definitely needs an escape path so whenever i look at these videos it's like how can i use that and this is a great visual it's a great visual so what happened then and that's typically like right here this is typically the the end of the discussion in msf but how can we make it more and well we can because we got actual crash footage so what happened during this what we all all we got to do during the msf is the search evaluate and then that's it there was no what happens when he executed did he execute something what happened what happened and then with the accident scene management or my ems skills I can go on even further after the crash. So that's that's kind of where I'm trying to come up with the full package. So right here, he definitely, he could have swerved. In this situation, um, swerve all the way to the left or apply the brakes because you slowed down. So if he didn't slow down and he had too high of a speed, we should understand from our own training that if you have too high of a speed and you never slow down or you haven't slowed down and you're not applying the brakes yet, that our total stopping distance isn't going to be enough okay we're going to still run into the vehicle we might run into the vehicle at a slower speed but we're still going to crash and that's not what we want so all we really have is the swerving so what we, we can uh like you just uh, the five two wheeler you can slow down and then swerve that's perfectly fine hopefully this vehicle sees us and doesn't continue on its path of travel which it doesn't look like it does it looks like right before it hits the car it stops Maybe not, but that's an e we are we are already traveling at a high rate of speed. You could easily swerve to the left in this situation. It's better not to put ourselves into the situation with hazard perception if we understand that and we see, and we notice that we can't see around this bus and there, there's definitely an intersection there because you see that vehicle uh, right here. Little clues, guys. Little clues. Why is this vehicle perpendicular to us? Why is this vehicle perpendicular to us? And you'd be like, oh, there's an intersection. And even and if you're wrong, if it's not an intersection, if there's if this vehicle is just off the road and there's no way a vehicle is going to pull out, and you know, that's fine. 
but if you assume the worst and you think that this is an intersection or a place for vehicles to come out, then you're slowing down. And then, since you're slowing down, you're like, okay, what's you're creeping around this corner like we're in a haunted house. It's like, what's going on here? You've already been slowed down enough to where you can apply the brakes and you'll stop in time. But if you didn't do that, if you got into this position because you didn't see ahead of time, you didn't know, then this is where having our skills is super important. So slide to the left, swerve to the left. He tried. Look at it. So if we go back, and we could just kind of go with right here. I'll go ahead and scroll you guys up. So see the see the fender right on the bottom, right next to the line? See the fender? See how it's straight? So if we can just kind of make an idea of where he's going, it'd probably be like right here. So if he didn't change his path to travel, he would be about like right here, right? So I'm going to hold this. So he would be like right here. So he would probably be like right into, like his nose would be right here, right in the front of the fender. So he made a very slight swerve to the left, barely a swerve. And this is why you guys need to practice your swerves and see how far you can actually go. So he barely swerved. And now his front went past the vehicle, but he got clipped in the side. So if he was able to swerve a foot more to the left, six inches to the left, he might have been able to avoid this, but he barely swerved. And what happens typically on why you barely swerve is because you're not comfortable with your swerve. And two, you're applying the brakes and swerving at the same time. If you're applying the brakes and swerving at the same time, and I see this all the time, is that you're locking those tires up or you're using traction to decelerate when you should have more traction to turn. If you have more traction to turn, you can turn harder without fear of falling down. But if you're applying the brakes and trying to turn, it's just going to slide. You're just sliding. I would swerve to the left because I already, if we can keep it simple, I have an open spot here that I know of. If I swerve to the right, I am guessing and hoping that this guy moves. So what's your what's your 90% chance? Like, what's your biggest chance to, if you swerved right now, if this vehicle did not move, you would run into this vehicle if you swerved right. If the vehicle did move, you might still make it in a left-hand swerve. You might still make it. So, I mean, you have to figure out what's the what's the greater chance of probability think it's honestly like terminator vision what's the greater chance that i will not hit this vehicle do i have an open spot here to the left yes do i have an open spot to the right no and if i swerve to the right and let's say he moved out of the way and we made a good idea well guess what we have these vehicles now that we have to swerve left again to get away from so i have this open area to the left i'll swerve and then i'll get back in line as best i can that's what i would do that's right. Yeah, even uh, Alexandra, even a hard uh, left swerve, and then you get into the shoulder and you slow down and stop. That's a great option because now you, since you're stopped, you're out of the way. You can look back and forth. Okay, I'm gonna merge back in. That's a good one. Just really watch out for these pedestrians. You really don't want to hit a pedestrian. That would suck. Um, so yeah, my best option would be go left. And I wouldn't slow down before turning left either because I know this vehicle is moving. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just go left as far as I can, hopefully get into his line of sight, and maybe he'll slam the brakes. That's what I would do. Yeah, the dr and but that's, that's if you get into the situation without hazard perception. Let's say, you, I mean, this is what you did. You got into this position because you weren't paying attention. And now we're having to do all this crazy calculations in our head what's a good swerve well where do we go what do we do you don't want to make that decision in an emergency what you want to do is make the decisions when there isn't an emergency and that is hazard perception not that part uh, that's hazard perception so right now there's no emergency zero emergency you can think you can think you can think and you can make plans. You can you can literally like like 
honestly, if I had editing right now, I could I could kind of show you, but I'd be like, okay, you could go left, you can go right, you could do this, you could do that. You you have all these different plans because nothing's rushing at you right now. And if you ever get into a position where you feel like you're being rushed to make decisions, that means you're going too fast. That's as simple as that. If you feel like you can't make a decision or something like a hazard flew by you, you didn't even notice it, you're probably going too fast or you're not paying attention. So to avoid this whole sort of left, sort of right, sort of this, sort of that, let's slow down here. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's slow down here. We got hazards galore right here. And a lot of people don't even recognize this as a hazard situation. They just think this is a normal situation. This is just what happens. And then that car pulled out in front of me and, and hit me. And they're, they're, it's their fault. But we could have prevented that. We could have prevented that. And that's what I'm trying to get at with people is that let's look at this. Let's not worry about doing fancy, you know, figure eights and U-turns and all this other stuff right now. Okay. What's causing people to die? It's, it's more it, the curve situation, the intersection situation, the solo crash situation, all the stats that I looked up and I'm continuously looking up. It's user error. Like, I think it's two thirds of all uh, motorcycle crashes that involve another car. So two thirds of all motorcycle crashes that involve another car. Typically, it's going to be a left handed turn is going to be the uh, solo incident with the motorcyclist. So it involved another car, though. There was no collision in two thirds of those. The collision wasn't what caused the crash for the motorcyclist in two thirds of two vehicle accidents, a car and a motorcycle. Two thirds did not involve the impact causing the accident. Two thirds of it ca is caused by the motorcyclist attempting an invasive maneuver and crashing to avoid a car. So two thirds, why are we blaming all accidents on cars? We have two thirds statistics that show that we as motorcycle riders are trying to avoid the accident, but still crash, why? And when I watch these videos, on like when I watch these videos, he's doing an invasive maneuver right now. So he's gonna be part of that one third. He's gonna actually he's actually gonna collide. But he's part of that one third is trying to do some type of evasive maneuver. And let's say this car stopped and he still dumped it. He's part of the two thirds now. But why are we crashing in this situation? because he didn't see the hazards he doesn't know how to apply the proper evasive skills so that is going to be the problem it's not the car it's not the car and that's actually a good thing i'm really glad that it's not the car's fault because that means we can learn and then we can train better So if we look at this, um, he got hit on his right leg. These knee, these knee pads, uh, I, I don't know if these are CE rated. I mean, they could be construction, but I mean, these are pretty heavy duty to stay on your leg. That's good. Regular jeans, they're not going to offer you. They're going to offer about one second. They're going to offer about one second of abrasion resistance, and you typically slide for two to three seconds. So you're going to have two to three. You're going to have about two seconds of skin contact to the ground. Uh, the shoes will fly off easily, and then more likely it doesn't have a jacket. So this is just a hoodie. Same thing. It'll, it'll, it'll shred. And then you have the impact, obviously. Very common, very common. She didn't. So, okay. I get a little upset with that. I think it's kind of dumb. Okay. So we have a, a situation right here when it comes to Nikes. Yeah, Jeff, there you go. Yeah, yeah, with the Nike emote. Guys, if you'd like to support the channel, um, there's many ways of doing that. Just subscribing is, is a huge one. We're, we're doing really good with subscriptions. Um, really enjoy it. 
I love seeing the numbers go up. We're getting like 300 a day at least. It's awesome. Um, but you guys are making it popular or not popular. You guys are making it possible by sharing. So if you guys would like to share any of your favorite videos of mine, that'd be great. Um, but if you would like to support monetarily or help out in that way, uh, there's YouTube memberships. It really does help out. It really, really does. So click that link and become a YouTube member. You're going to get, uh, you see how Jeff has a, has a beard and James Wiley has a mustache. You start off with a mustache, you get a green name. If you click that link right now, uh, really good. So anyways, right here, he sees this vehicle. So he's looking straight. So uh, his camera might be cockeyed or anything like that, but he's, he's looking straight right now. And this vehicle is not a hazard. It's in the far lane and it's doing its own thing, whatever. So now he's looking at the vehicle. Because he sees that it crossed the line. You see how it's crossing the line? That means they're not staying within the lines, obviously. But what's the indication for that? Uh, the pa Oh, the Patreon doesn't have emotes. The Patreon doesn't have emotes. That is literally just supporting outside of YouTube because YouTube can be an ass sometimes. Um, same thing on, on YouTube memberships. I have The lowest tier is, is $199. So if you want... And if you sign up and then you cancel it, you still get... A whole month's worth of, of emotes and stuff. So if you want to, uh, you click that link, and it's it's one ninety nine, and you get uh, all the emotes. We got a ton of emotes. What emotes do we have? We have boom, 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 boom. And I can I, I can actually get one more. I can actually get one more. I can actually do one more. Yeah, the Patreon is literally like, it, it's really good because uh they only take like overall like 10 percent of the money so 90 percent comes to me youtube they they do it's like a 70 30 split so i mean they do take quite a bit compared to patreon but you get some badass emotes you get some cool things for the live streams so and I, so i made it as cheap as possible for both sides so for you can do patreon and youtube for four dollars a month and you get the best of both worlds that's or you could just do one or the other whatever you want to do I do give different perks though. You see how Sean right there, uh, he's got his picture, um, all those things. Um, there's different perks on Patreon versus YouTube. So anyways, we got this guy wanting to come over here. We got this guy wanting to come over. So now he's starting to recognize something's out of the ordinary. It's off to my side. I'm going to look at it. Okay. So we, j we already watched how this person crept over into our lane. That's why I like to show the video first and then we go over the issue. So right here... His biggest issue is that she merged. But where are we? Where are we in, in position with this car? Where are we in position of this car? We're in the blind spot. We're, in, we're absolutely in the blind spot. So, yeah, the car didn't see him. Even if she, she looked at her mirrors. Let's say she just looked at her mirrors. She didn't check her blind spot by doing a head check. So she's looking at her mirrors, not going to be able to see you. So for us as motorcyclists, if you're ever in a position and this is your point of view, and there's a car to the left or the right, all these different things, right? If this is your point of view, you are in a hazard. You are a ha you're you're in a hazard trap. So you need to start. You guys need to start recognizing what your hazards hazards are, the hazard traps, intersections. Um, you got turns coming up. Um, I talk about how cars can kill you. So anyone in the turn lane wanting to turn left in front of you, that's a hazard trap. Uh, if you're in a blind spot going in the same direction as traffic, that's a hazard trap because cars merging out in front of you. If you're passing on the right or you're on the, you're on the far right lane and there's a bunch of cars parked on the right, like they're parked in front of businesses, the hazard is people opening their doors. So this right here is a hazard trap. So if you're ever in this position, understand that, that person's not going to see you. I think I'm probably one of the only people that I know of that does a head check in the car. I literally sit up, look, sit up, look, and then indicate and then go. I think I'm like one of the only people that I know that does that. So I assume that this guy's not doing it or this chick's not doing it or this girl, whatever you want to call it, whatever, it's early. Uh, I assume that this person's not going to look. So what you need to do is slow down or switch lanes. You do a head check real quick to the left, switch lanes. And then that would have de-escalated everything. 
this person in the car would have went on with their day. Maybe they wouldn't have learned anything, but you as a motorcyclist would have put another notch, another, another, another achievement unlocked of, I saw a hazard and I prevented anything happening to me by seeing it and doing something about it before shit happened. So there's many times where I'll see somebody speed up and, you know, natural driver behavior speed up and then want to get in that lane. And now I'm in their blind spot. Okay, I'll slow down. And then all of a sudden I'll see them get in my lane. And I'd be like, I'm glad I slowed down. So guys, this is why it's very important to recognize this right here. This spot is a hazard. You're in the blind spot. So the horn was being honked instead of what? Applying the brakes or rolling up the throttle so you have engine uh, engine braking, some deceleration. What about turning and moving into the left lane? Nothing. The horn. This is why I don't like the horn. Because a lot of people think that I'll just use the horn. But there's many times where people just use the horn and still get hit. There's a lot of times where somebody just decelerates and lets the car in front of them and don't doesn't do anything anymore and then they don't get hit. So what's the better of the options? Slow it down. Relax. Now, purposely accelerating to get up and then tell this person you did something wrong, let's put that aside. This is why I don't like road rage or anything like that. It's because what's what else is happening? The world does not stop because you have road rage and you're gonna to talk to this person. The world does not stop. What do we have here? We have cars stopping in front of us. We have a car wanting to pull out in front of us. So let's say you still had to move to the far left lane. You have a car pull out in front of you, you get hit. So what What are we doing here? What's, what's the real situation here? We have a lot of hazards coming up. And right now our primary focus is to tell this person they did something wrong. Your primary focus should be your own safety hazard the hazard presented itself you're not hit good move over do something else look for other hazards now that's why i don't understand this i i personally don't understand it because it i focus on making sure that i'm not hit by anything she says she didn't see him and yeah, easy way to get shot, especially in Arizona. That's it's an easy way to get shot. And on top, oops. And on top of that, this vehicle is insanely powerful compared to your bike, and then heavy too. I mean, everyone thinks about bikes as being like, oh, we got all this horsepower, blah blah blah. Yeah, that's great and all. I mean, cars have quite a bit of horsepower too, and they're also bigger. They might not accelerate, they may not turn, they might not do all that stuff like your bike can do, but I'm going to tell you one thing, they could easily turn to the left and hit you, and it's not going to do, it's not going to mess up her steering or nothing, you're just going to fall over like a, like a leaf, like a leaf, so it's, it's not, it's not wise to do that, I understand the anger, but we could prevent the anger by seeing the hazards beforehand. Um... In this situation, I mean, he's not looking forward, and we have all these vehicles. And once again, when I say we have a big open lane like this, and we have vehicles backed up, what's one of the most common things that they're going to want to do? They're going to want to get into the shorter lane. They're going to want to get out of their stupid line. So now we're going to be in the left lane. We're not paying attention. We're looking at this other car, trying to yell at her. And now we have, let's say, this white vehicle in front of this red car. Like, I'm going to switch lanes, and then boom, you run into that person. That, we've seen those videos where the person's yelling at somebody. They're not looking forward, and they hit something. We've seen that. It, it's, it's crazy that people still do this. It really is. Yeah, easily. Look at that. He's looking back. Let's go ahead and scroll back. Let's do five seconds, and then just watch. Like, How uncomfortable do you feel knowing that there's there could be a possibility of a car pulling out in front of him? So how uncomfortable do you feel when you see this part? To me, it's like any of these cars could move over. Because guess where we're at right now? We're in the blind spot of this red vehicle. She's saying, uh, I didn't see you. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. So she's apologetic. She's very apologetic. 
and he's yelling at her like you uh he's saying um he's saying some bad stuff and he's also saying you should you're not even applying your brakes all these different things here I'll, I'll i'll increase the volume for you guys i'll and i'll shut up for this part I didn't see you and sorry. I don't think she, that's the thing is guys, I don't, I, I maybe give people too much benefit, benefit of the doubt. Um, but I honestly believe that other drivers on the road don't want to kill people. <laughs> I, it, I don't think there's some secret vendetta against motorcyclists and there, there is some prejudice, you know, there is some of that stuff out there. You know, there's some people that get pissed off at people that lane filter. Um, I see that. I, I understand I, I kind of understand that it's like why are you getting in front of the line when I can't I, I get that I really do but that's very rare that's very rare and I don't think that is what's happening here all right oh it's hand Oh, this one's gonna be fun. All right, what did he say at the beginning? There was something there. At this point, look at one frame. It's only one frame. The dude tried to cut it out and didn't cut out that one frame. As an editor or somebody that creates my own videos, like when I see that, it's like he didn't cut out that one frame. <laughs> At this point, I admit I should have reacted sooner, but I can't exactly remember what happened as I did see the brakes and I felt like I responded instantly. But hey, accidents happen and luckily no one else was hurt. So accidents. I I do believe an accident means something that you didn't try to do, which I believe a, a lot of people don't try to crash. But yeah, he's lucky, but it's like, what can we learn from that, man? What, what are you learning from that? This 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 statement doesn't really sound like any remorse, especially with that happy face. I mean, yes, you should be slightly embarrassed, but then how do you learn from that embarrassment? How do you learn from that? And then on top of that, my job is, is I mean, I, I crashed my Harley into that bush and I made fun of myself. I mean, it was a early April Fool's thing. But it's like I, I posted that because it was embarrassing to me when I first did it three years ago, and I still posted it. But it's like let's learn from it. Let's enter, let's be a little entertainment. Let's do something. Let's not let's not be like ah, it's not a big deal. Ha <laughs> ha. It, it is a big deal. You crash into a car. It is a big deal. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm different. Maybe I just want people to to learn and not crush their hand because I hate seeing that shit. So we got this guy. Um already already it's very difficult to see it's nighttime it looks like it's raining we got water droplets on the face shield um thankfully it's a clear shield so he can at least see through because it's nighttime electric how you doing um and we have brake lights is air visibility is the problem visibility is the massive problem secondary problem is traction Third problem, I mean, if I want to keep going, third problem would probably be possible uh, hypothermia. Um, not necessarily he's in hypothermia, but uh, the early stages, like uh, where you start getting uh, cramping, you start getting uh, loss of dexterity, you start getting slow movements in your body, so your hands aren't as smooth, your 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 upper body's not as smooth, and that that's huge. That's really big when it comes to motorcycle riding. So like maybe that's the third. Uh, but the main one is definitely vision and then he has his visor cracked open because it's probably fogging inside of his helmet so how do we prevent that at least that that fogging part well get a pin lock system get get anti-fog uh stuff on the shield so that it's not going to do that okay so boom that's that that little thing can be fixed and remember we talked about it could be one two or three like small things that cascade into a big chain of events that causes problems for you so if vision is a problem that will cascade into something massive well let's get rid of the, that problem at the beginning let's prevent it an ounce of prevention okay an ounce of prevention so let's get a pin lock system anti-fog boom we're good on that 
but now it's like, well, hazard perception. So we got brake lights. We got brake lights. But I can't see my escape path because of all the stupid lights. But we have brake lights, and we're not doing anything. We didn't do anything. We literally just ran into them. We have an escape route to the left on that bike lane, but it looks like it's already being taken over by the van. But we definitely have something to the right. But how, why are we having to do an escape path? Because we have a pretty decent following distance right here, right? That's a pretty decent following distance. So maybe increase your following distance a little bit or pay attention to up ahead so that you can see the brake lights and then start applying the brakes. That would have fixed the problem. Paying attention would have fixed the problem. If vision is so poor that you can't pay attention, then don't ride. And if you have to ride at home, like let's say it's after work and you just have to get home, or you have to get somewhere and this is the situation, then keep your following distance pretty big. Ride within uh, the situation's uh, parameters. Right now, it's like it's a shitty situation. It's 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 probably cold. It's wet. It's nighttime. So ride within that situation. So slow down. You need to have uh, adequate reaction time. And if you're going too fast, you're not going to have that good of a reaction time. And then you're going to outrun basically your vision on this. You're going to go too fast for you to be able to make decisions with your vision. So that would have prevented this incident. And I get a lot of the stuff, what I'm saying, um, from my EMS uh, and firefighting uh, training. So I had to drive fire trucks, ambulances, all those different things. We'll just go through the last few. Oh, there's a low side. Neat. That's a brick wall. So that, that's a low side. And that's what I wanted to see. So he low slid. Let's go ahead and do this. So he low slid. This is a low side from this point of view. So there's the, the abrasions and impacts to that his left side. And it's going to grab. And then you're going to you're gonna start rotating. You're going to start rolling. So now you got abrasions on everything. Everything. And then impacts. And then you're going to hit the wall. Face, face first, and it's going to yank you back. Easily internal decapitation. Easily. So what a decapitation is your head basically falling off. Internal is when your, uh, your brain stem and your, bone, your, uh, your cervical spine are snapped. But your head's still on. A lot like a hanging. A lot like a hanging. That's how they kill you with a hanging. It's that it's that super uh, sharp drop, and the rope is perfectly tightened around a certain part of your neck, and that snap at the bottom is what snaps your brainstem, and you die instantly. Uh, in the movies, or or when somebody messes up and they're struggling at the bottom, they're choking to death. That that means that it wasn't set up right. There is a science to hanging somebody. So he's got a uh, impact right there. So this is definitely done on a normal road. This is uh, street racing or street riding. Because on a track, it's not going to have that. On a track, it's not going to have a, a brick wall right there. So that's that's the problem with, with uh, riding on street. Is that you're going to have objects that will cause you to have a de an internal decapitation or uh, massive impacts to where you pretty much turn into mush. Literally, you'll turn into mush. I've picked up somebody with uh, so many broken bones that it it literally is like picking up uh, like a folded, a really big folded blanket. So there's some structure to it, but it's like spilling over your arms. You know what I mean? And that's what the body's going to be. It's going to be all intact because it's all within the one suit. The suit is basically keeping his body from like spilling out. So that's why you guys don't do that on the street. Yeah. 
the guy that uh, Scott, the guy that I I had to pick up uh, wasn't from a motorcycle accident, but he fell uh, while trimming a palm tree. So he fell 30 feet and he landed on grass. He landed on grass. But when I when I showed up with my crew and I showed up, he was face down. His his face was down. Okay, his face was down. His chest was about three quarters of the way prone. And you, you're probably picking this up. Three quarters of the way prone. Around the, the thorax. Around, or I'm sorry, the, the lumbar. Right around the lumbar area. It, that was about... That was almost supine. And then his lower extremities were prone but twisted the other way. So he was twisted. He was like in a full twist. So face down, but his legs and his shoes were pointed straight up. And then since he was face down, he was on his right side. He was face down on his right. His left arm was branched all the way around and was basically like it wasn't connected with any bones or ligaments. It was just like dead meat. It was just like meat just hanging over. It, it looked like family. It seriously, I, I we made a joke obviously at the station after that. Family guy falling down. It it looked like this. It's funny when you see this. Let's oops. Let's do open image new tab. So it's funny when you see this. I mean, it's Family Guy, right? Uh, no, he didn't make it. He died. Uh, he was alive when we had him, but uh, he died at the hospital. Um, it, he looked a lot like this, but his face was completely into the dirt. Like, his face was into the dirt. His chest looked a little bit like this, where it's not all the way over. His, his arm that was underneath was like this, and then his other arm was wrapped around just like this in the, in, with Peter Griffin. But his legs were completely twisted. So his legs were like if you're laying on your back and your toes are pointed straight up. That's how his legs were. So his head and face were down and his legs and everything was facing up. And then his arms were like this. He was absolutely, that's a 30 foot fall. 30 foot fall, okay. It, it it looked a lot like this. It looked a lot like that. That's crazy. It looked a lot like that. Uh, this arm that is branched down right there, it was over the top of her body, or his body, and his legs were, were, were just, like, destroyed. But it looked a lot like that. And then when you pick them up, you need to have, like, six people because you're picking up every section of that body or it's or it's falling apart so when i see something like this i'm like man that's that's easy to do and that's a dude just falling 30 feet down on grass imagine going 60 to uh, 60 miles an hour hitting a wall i mean that's that's way more force than that It was a tough job. It, Fifty Shades of Effed Up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So when we talk about stopping distance, guys, this is actually a really good video. I want to see if I can find this one. Obviously get permission for it. Uh, is Zinsi out when he hits the ground? Uh, the, the other guy that hits the... Uh, or are you talking about the palm tree guy? No, he was conscious. He was conscious when we were working him. He wasn't... He 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 was he was conscious, but he wasn't, like, very alert. Like, he, he responded to pain. He didn't, he didn't talk to us. So there's the whole avpu, alert, verbal, pain, unresponsive. Um, alert is when, you know, like, just you and me talking right now. You and me talking, you're alert because you're able to answer my questions, all these other things. 
verbal is that if I uh, like if I ask you a question, you don't respond to me at all, and then um, I like say, "Hey, uh, Doty," you, and then you're like, "Huh? What?" That's alert to verbal, and that's it. That's all you'll say. Then uh, pain, a, a v p u. Pain is like when I poke you and I and I and I like do something. I touch you. I touch a painful spot. And then you kind of groan or you say stop, and then that's it. Um, that's pain. But then there's unresponsive. That's when you're unconscious. So he was uh, he was at the P level. He was at the P level. Heshman, Heshman, how you doing? So he was at the P level. So Avpu, alert, verbal, pain, unresponsive. He was at the P level. So we touched him. He responded to the pain, but he wouldn't respond to our words. So he wasn't unresponsive. He was barely conscious. And then he died at the hospital. The guy that fell down. I was using it as an example, Doty. Don't worry. So when we talk about uh, total stopping distance here, it's the it's reaction time, breaking distance, or reaction time plus breaking distance equals total stopping distance. So when you're going at a high rate of speed, your total stopping distance is far. So this is the moment he says in his editing he sees it. But that's when he sees it. You see that grab? So we have the reaction time. So let's say he sees it right here. And then however long it takes him to do this right there, that's your reaction time portion of that equation. Now from here until he actually stops is his stopping distance. Add the reaction time to stopping distance, total stopping distance. So he looks like he's got quite a bit of room, right? Well, at that speed, it's not enough. So this is why I find it very important to slow down just a little bit. Let's not accelerate into intersections. Let's slow it down before intersections, just a little bit. And when I, it, if you feel like you don't want to slow down, that's fine, but at least get ready for something that might happen. He's sliding. He is sliding. That is his rear tire locked up, his front tire probably starting to lock up, all these different things. You're going to see him slipping and sliding, so I'll show you guys. Watch that back end. He's going to fishtail. I gotta fast forward this one. This one's probably copyrighted. Anything that's like super interesting, see how it's on fire? Anything that's super interesting like that uh, tip, typically gets viral hog. Um, so the whole fire thing, dry brush, um, you have fuel. Uh, there's an upper and lower uh, flammable limit. There's uh, an explosive limit to some of these things. Uh, with gasoline, it's the it's pretty easy to catch fire. It's not necessarily the gasoline. It's it's got to be the fumes mixed in with the right amount of oxygen. So you have that upper and lower flammable limit, UFL and uh, LFL, um, and then upper explosive limit, lower explosive limit. All these different things you learn in the EMS and fire. Um, this was just the perfect situation for it to do. It's not going to explode, explode. It's not going to go boom like in the movies. It, this is basically as worse as it's going to get. And then it's just going to catch more and more fire. It's not going to blow the F up. It's not under pressure. A little too fast. There you go. Slow down. Slow down. So this is a good example of going too fast for the hazards. So at this point, he looks at that intersection. There's an intersection in the middle of the turn. And at this point, he looks at the intersection. So something caught his eye or something, but he looks at the intersection right here and Let's say there was a hazard that popped out. Do you think he has enough reaction time for it? Do you think he's able to do anything about it? Nothing. 
absolutely nothing in this situation. He's just hoping that whatever's there is going to stay there and not hit him. And that's where we start running into problems. So this is the moment he looks. So look, he's looking through the turn. Now he looks. Making sure it's clear. But at no point can he react if it wasn't clear. On a track, the road is going to look like this a little bit. I mean, you're not going to have guardrails and all that stuff. The road's going to be nice and wide, beautiful, good, everything. But there's not going to be trees, so you're not going to have this shade, no shade issue. There's not going to be an intersection, so you're not going to have this issue of having to look and make sure it's clear. All these things are going to be minimized at a track to be as safe as possible. Remember, as safe as possible. Not going to be safe. It's going to be as safe as possible. So do this at a track, guys. That is a high side. So he's going to start to slide. Is there no delay? I think there's like a 10 second delay. So he's going to slide. His rear end's going to slide out. What's up, Boris? How you doing? Vinus, how you doing, man? So he's starting to slide. So this is a low side right here. It's kind of hard to see. because There's not much on the screen. I mean, we don't got much. But he's starting to low side. And then it's going to grab traction, that rear tire or front tire, whichever one, maybe both, is going to grab traction. When it grabs traction, it's going to obviously grab it, but then the top end, all the kinetic forces, your body is still traveling. So you're going to be flipped up and ejected, and that's what turns into a high side. And high sides are very dangerous because you have all the impacts that are associated with like a deadly accident. And then you're also going to have road rash. On a low side, you're going to have some impacts, but it's mostly road rash. So that's why it's dangerous. Because you get ejected. Look at it. Hands out. So now you got both, every body part of your, everything in your body is, is going to get hit. All right, one more video, guys. And I gotta get back to work. Not paying attention. A little bit too close. Oh, 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 oh. So that's what I'm talking about when it comes to um, the two thirds. Two thirds of people that are involved in a two vehicle collision. Um, are motorcyclists that attempt to do some type of evasive maneuver like braking or swerving but then basically creates their accident and then they the bike or something hits the other vehicle or they hit the vehicle so it's not necessarily the impact of the vehicle that causes the problem a lot of the times it's the person not paying attention so we have this person coming up to a hazard trap which is very obvious it's a hazard trap. We have, and I know different laws, different cultures, and everything do play a role in this. <laughs> Working with you. <laughs> I'm hanging out with you. I'm hanging out with you guys. Um, I am working with you guys. But I got I, I to gotta finish my editings. Uh, maybe one day, maybe on the After the Ride channel, I could, I could just do live stream edits. Maybe that would be something I could do. I'll live stream uh, how I make the videos and editing and all that stuff. Just got a text from my wife. So he's going to come up to this intersection, sees a hazard, and that's that's a panic break. Okay, you don't see the you see no brakes right here. So this light is just the running lights on his on the tail end of his bike, and then right there how it illuminates, and then you see how his his front end kind of dives down. That's that's the decompression of the uh, shocks because the weight's transferring to the front because of the braking. There it is. And then he just he just slams it. So he's been sliding for the moment he grabs the brakes. Okay, now it's locked up. He's sliding. And then there is the dump. So this is two-thirds of all motorcycle accidents that involve another vehicle. This is typically what happens. So ignoring the injuries, this is what happens. 
typically. And that's great news. That means that we can learn not to panic break. And that means we can learn to prevent that. So I'm happy that two thirds of the accidents are caused by somebody not doing evasive maneuvers correctly. That means um, there's an opportunity to learn. So I like that. I don't like that they're hurt. I don't like it. I, I, I dislike it quite a bit, but it allows us to learn. So that's awesome. So guys, I just wanted to say thank you. I want to say thank you for being part of the stream. Um, I'm going to always end it with, uh, for you guys to come join the discord. So the discord is once again, hundred percent free. Uh, I'm going to get back to work, but I would love it if you guys would join and subscribe to the after the ride channel, the after the ride channel is right there. Click that link for the after the ride channel. Uh, it really does help out. Um, so click that subscribe and then come back because I want you guys to join the discord. The discord is absolutely free. Discord is free. I do have some rooms that are set aside for YouTube members and patrons. So Doty, I'm pretty sure you found those. Um, but please join. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. Here's the, here's the stream right here, or here's the discord right here. Hi stream. There it is. Trenchy already beat me to it. Okay, I'm going to find, let's do trending gifts. There we go. Let's just do that. Crash Bandicoot. Can't can't go wrong with Crash Bandicoot. So join the Discord. Discord's absolutely free. The five uh, five two wheeler definitely will, man. Definitely will. Um, well, I'm trying to figure out way a way to make it um, educational. So more than likely that will be. I mean, it's got to be something. I I gotta figure it out, man. I gotta figure it out. I do like doing the live streams or in the the moto vlogs. Doty leveled up. Boris joined. So I'll go ahead and do a stream. See that Ginger Ven, he's a he's an admin. So Boris just joined. Welcome Boris. Welcome Boris. So join the stream, Jeff. Thank you, Robert. It's always good to, to see you again, dude. Always good. Uh, short on short on ramp car tailgating cars coming through. What do you do? I ride my ride, and the person behind me will just have to deal with it. If I need to stop. I will, but stop in a position that is off the side of the vehicle in front of me. That's what I would do for that situation. So short on ramp, car is tailgating you. So you're going on the off or let's say off ramp. I think it was off ramp. Wait, is it on ramp? Cars coming through. I'll. I probably yeah off ramp so off ramp coming out cars behind you cars stopped in front of you I got to get out of the way I got to stop so I'm gonna stop um, for the on ramp I would accelerate or get or sorry merge into the flowing traffic as safe as possible. Yeah, Boris. Yeah, it's it's a giant chat room. Um, you're gonna have to sync up your phone, do all that stuff. Um, but we got quite a bit of people in here. I mean, we got 2,100 people in here. It's it's a lot of fun. Dude, Robert, I would love to. That would be kind of cool. Copyright's a big issue nowadays compared to a lot uh, back then. So I gotta find a non-copyrighted music that would fit what I want to do. Thank you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to editing. I'll probably make um, another after the ride. I'm gonna probably I'm gonna start something with the after the ride channel. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do an opinion piece on a few things. I got some ideas, and then uh, we'll we'll figure it all out, guys. Pretty excited about it. I gotta do a voiceover for the uh, Indian Scout Bobber 20 because the audio didn't record. So I'm gonna have to do a voiceover now. <laughs> 